Well, I hope you're as excited as I am today because we're talking about return on investment and calculations on how to determine percentage wise the difference between a compounding and a non-compounding return on investment. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Levi Woods. This is Drawbridge Finance. This is a channel on YouTube that specifically is designed to help people like you increase your knowledge about investments. Now, today I am talking about return on investment calculations. Now, I think that this is a very important topic because I use it every single day. Now, how I use it is what is really important because when I'm looking at a percentage calculation, what I'm trying to do is compare at a glance any investment that I'm trying to make to kind of get an idea of what that investment yield is gonna be over time. So when I'm looking at you know a, a calculation and, I'm, and I know that my investment may cost me $400, but it's gonna return $32, how can I quickly tell how much percentage-wise value of my portfolio is going to increase over time? Now, I found from doing it over the years that there's two types of ways that I can typically do this. With dividend investing, it's pretty easy. If I'm able to, I can take my investment lump it into a, into a stock that's gonna pay me a monthly dividend. Then when I get paid that monthly dividend in cash, I take that dividend and I reinvest it back into that same stock. What this does is it increases the value of my investment month over month. The value each month therefore pays out a little bit bigger return. Now this is what's called compound interest. I mean, it's, it's one of the amazing wonders of the world, really. I mean, I love it because it's the way that we grow wealth over time. So dividend investing specifically is a way where we would want to estimate using compound return on investment. Now, as an option trader, I actually calculate all the time not using a compound return on investment. And the reason that I do that is because oftentimes I will allocate a certain amount of, of stock and it's going to make a specific return each month, but I might take that return in cash and not reinvest it back into the original investment. Now that I'm retired, I actually live off my dividends. So most of the calculations that I do actually revolve around simple non-compounding return on investment. Now let's get into this so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. I've built this really simple chart and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare two different scenarios. We're gonna take $1,000, $1,000, that seems so low. Let's take $10,000, let's, let's fire up this chart. We're gonna pretend there's two different scenarios. We're gonna take $10,000 and we're going to invest it into an investment that pays $60 per month. This is the type of return on investment that I would use to calculate return on option income. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll have $10,000 that I will allocate towards a specific stock and I'll say, okay, this, this stock underlying, I'm gonna sell a covered call on it every single month. So I have 100 shares and each month I sell a covered call and every time I do it, it's going to generate $60. So I wanna know at the end of the year what my percentage return is gonna be. Now I'm not gonna take that $60 and put it back into the investment. I'm always going to be investing $10,000 every single month. We're gonna look at a second scenario where we have a $10,000 investment in dividend stocks, which pays $60 in dividends. We're gonna take that $60 every month, we're gonna buy more stock. The first month we'll have a value of $10,000 and then it's gonna return a 0.6% return or $60 and our cash balance is gonna be $10,060. So in month two, scenario one, we're still investing $10,000. Scenario two, we're taking the 60 bucks and we're adding it back into the investment and it's returning a 0.6% return. So that the return on investment this month is gonna be $60.36. This is pretty typical for dividend investing. So the cash balance goes up to 10,120 and we can see that in month three. The non-compounding investment is going to be just the $10,000 again. So we're comparing month three, $10,000, returns only $60. The compounding one is gonna return $60.72. You can see how this starts to snowball. So I'm gonna populate out the rest of the chart and we can see that at the end of the year, if we made 0.6% per month, every single month, at the end of the year, it's a 7.2% return. We can check that calculation really easily. Return on investment calculation is the final value, which would be 10,070, minus the initial value, which would be $10,000, and divided 
by the initial value of $10,000. That leaves us a result of $720 divided by 10,000 or 0 0.072 or 7.2%. If we did it over the whole year, you could just add it up. If you're making 0.6% per month, you could times that by 12 and you'd get 7.2. But with compounding, it's a little bit harder to get the number. We know that the result, 7.442% is calculated quite easily. The return on investment is the final value minus the initial value. So that would be $10,744 in the account. And we know that we started the year with $10,000. So that's a total gain of $744 divided by the initial investment of $10,000 gives us this 7.442%. We can see the difference, but if we add up all of these 0.6%, they don't add to 7.4, nor if we multiply them. So there's gotta be a way to calculate that. And that's what I'm gonna show you. Now, if you guys are interested in playing with this spreadsheet yourself, I'll put it for free on my Patreon because you guys should all be following my Patreon account. I put up free posts all the time. I have the membership tiers available, obviously, so you can pay either $7 a month, you get the spreadsheet download every month, you get access to my life portfolio, and you get access to all my dividend trades and any uh, dividend reinvestment plans that I do. Uh, and for my $20 tier, I do these option trades, and there's tons. I mean, I made five or six posts just today. Where I'm trading all the time, and people trade with me live in the Discord chat room. So we set up the trades, we execute them, and it's really simple. To, to learn. It's a great place to ask questions and to figure out if option trading is something that you'd like to, to check out. So yeah, go download this spreadsheet because it's free. All we have to do is know the formula for how to calculate the simple. Let's look at a $10,000 investment that returns $100 per month. The expected ROI, as we calculated before, is gonna be 1%. Now this is monthly. To calculate the simple annual rate of return, we take the rate of return per time unit, which we know is 0 0.01, and then the number of time units in a year. And we know that there's 12 months in a year. So the calculation becomes quite easy. The simple annual return on investment is 0 0.01 or 1% times 12. And then the non-compounding annual rate of return is now 12%. So that's pretty simple calculation. It's a little bit more complex to calculate the compounding rate of return, but here's the formula. It's one plus return on interest per time unit, again, so that 0.1%, to the power of the number of time units in the year. So if we're doing this monthly, it would be 12 months so if we wanna calculate for the whole year, it's going to be one plus 0.01% to the power of 12, and then all of this, we just subtract a one. So if we look at it one more step further, so it's 1.01 to the power of 12 minus one. The calculation works out to 12.683%. So now if we compare that to this other chart calculator, let's put in 100 up here, we'll see, were we able to calculate this correctly? 12.683%. We were able to calculate that and estimate exactly what we would make without filling out the chart completely. Now, the interesting thing about this is when we start to apply it to real situations. Let's look at a trade that I put on today in the chat room. I'm looking at a trade I put on on May 12th for SLV, which is the silver ETF. I sold a naked put. Uh, it's going to expire June 19th. For this, I collected 39 cents. We times this by 100 shares, so we get $39 profit, profit minus our fees, so $38 returned. How much money did it cost us to make this investment? My account had margin of $620, so the margin requirement in US dollars was $442.70. If you look at the formula, we can see, it's quite simply the, the return on investment divided by the initial margin requirement. 8.66%, but I wanna know what it calculates out to annually. So to calculate that, we need to know the number of periods. So we take the 8.66%, we divide that by 38, which gives us our daily return, that we times it by 365, and this gives us our simple annual return on investment of 83%. Now, if we wanna know it compounding, it works out to 122%, and here's the calculation, 8.66%, to the power of 365 divided by 38. So if we take the 442 and we take the gains that we make, the $38, and we add the gains each time, and we do that throughout the year, then it's going to be this number of periods. The number of periods is calculated by 365 divided by 38. We subtract one, 
and the result is 122% compounded annual return on investment. Now let's take a look at another trade that we did last week. Now this was an earnings trade. We're gonna hold it for a very, very short amount of time and then the numbers can be completely dramatic using these expectation ROIs. If we look at this, we put on the trade on May 4th, we knew it was gonna close by May 8th. We had a $10,000 investment and we were expecting to make a max profit of $663, which we did by the way, which was awesome. So it's a 6.23% return. And if we use the simple ROI calculation, it returns 568%. But if we use the compounding uh, ROI calculation, it'll be 24,000%. Now that is like a completely unrealistic expectation. Both of these numbers really, 568. I mean, we're putting on a four day trade. We know we're gonna make a lot of money, but we're not expecting to do that every four days for the entire year. That would be super unrealistic. So on a trade like this, we're not expecting to use that ROI expectation at all, especially when you're looking at even crazier ones. Look at this one, it calculates the compounding at 136 trillion percent. I mean, we did make a 16% return in just two days, which was awesome. But the reality was we only made $41 on a $250 investment. It was relatively small. So you can see how using options, we can kind of bracket in and hone in on the kind of expectation that we're going to make monetarily. And we can use these numbers to project sometimes accurately and sometimes inaccurately. And that's the kind of stuff that we have to look for when we're investing because we don't wanna fall into the trap of having our expectation too high. We need to use these numbers to be able to control ourselves so we don't get too greedy. And that way we can all get rich together. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't and we'll see you next time because uh, this is awesome having you all here. Thanks so much. Talk soon.